Can you imagine Easter without chocolate? In the USA alone, more than 30 million kilograms are sold in this week. And chocolate sales are increasing by at least 2% every year, leading to a greater demand for cocoa. But cocoa production just cannot keep up. In recent years, there's been an epidemic of pests and diseases. Most of the world's cocoa is produced by about 6 million smallholder farmers. And they're also contending with aging trees and unsustainable farming methods. Mars, the world's second largest chocolate company, predicts that in 2020, the chocolate industry will be short of 1 million tons of cocoa. To ensure its survival, Mars realized it had to invest in the farmer. We need to do something to improve the productivity of the cocoa. We need to do something to help the farmer to triple their yield. One of the farmers desperate to triple his yields is Ahmad Darise. He lives in Indonesia, the world's third largest producer of cocoa. And in his village on Sulawesi Island, almost everyone grows it. Ahmad himself has been farming cocoa for 20 years. But he struggled against pests and diseases. And two years ago, he almost gave up. Sometimes I became very hopeless. Where could I go from here? How could I go on if I didn't have any more money? Sometimes I was so confused I got headaches. I would even cry at home. How would I solve this problem? Ahmed's neighbor Mimi Abudoho has a similar story. She has 1,000 cocoa trees, but her yield was so low that she couldn't support her family. Farming cocoa was very difficult for us because at that time we did not know much about cocoa. But in 2011, that changed. Mars partnered with the Indonesian government and the UN's International Fund for Agricultural Development, or IFAD, to open this cocoa development center. Ahmed and Mimi are among the 500 farmers who have come for training. Here they learn new techniques on how to care for their trees maintain their farms, and produce more and better cocoa. I like to work together with Mars because they want to exchange ideas about how to improve the quality of the cocoa and how to increase the yields. And for Mars, this mutually beneficial relationship is an inherent part of their philosophy. One of the Mars principles is uh, mutuality. Both sides have a mutual uh, benefit. That's meaning that we need to provide the ability to farmer to be able to increase the productivity in the farm. By the end, we'll also benefit the cocoa industry. And the training is already paying off. Back on her farm, Mimi applies the new techniques she has learned. A year ago, she used to only harvest 50 kilograms of cocoa beans twice a year. She now harvests 100 kilograms twice a month. Ahmad is also using his new skills. In the past year, his yields have increased by 60%. Now my heart feels happy. Praise God, I got through it. I will keep working hard with the cocoa because it is the only thing that can improve my life. Ahmad is just one of more than 400,000 smallholder cocoa farmers in Indonesia. And according to Anissa Pratiwi from the UN agency IFAD, which brought Mars and the government together, the survival of cocoa farmers depends on this kind of partnership. Partnership is important for the government, for the community, and for the private sectors. We need to work very closely together. We need to support each other in, in order to create a sustainable economic development in the future. And working together has been so successful that this year Mars plans to open more cocoa development centers in other areas. Meanwhile, farmers like Ahmad are passing on their new skills to those who missed the training. And as these new techniques spread and cocoa production increases, these farmers will earn a higher income, chocolate companies will get a continued supply of good quality cocoa, and chocoholics around the world will still get their fix.